So firstly, I'd like to say thank you so much for giving me your time and for coming. I want to apologise for my voice because I've had quite a few speaking engagements the last few days and I'm afraid I've worn my voice out. So if you're struggling to hear me, please just indicate to me and I'll try to speak a bit louder. Okay. Uh, also, I want to apologise for referring to my notes. It's the most... Um, uh, yeah, it's the safest way to ensure that I don't waffle on for, for too long. Okay, so anyway, um, some of you will already know that uh, on Thursday, the 3rd of November, I walked out of the hustings in Newport in South Wales after my opening speech to those present. I was accused of many things by my opponents, but it was truly my belief that these hustings were being conducted in such a way that there was really no debate to be had. Questions were selected beforehand, we were given a set time to respond to everything, and we couldn't respond to or challenge our opponents' answers. And most worryingly, I was warned beforehand by a party official not to challenge my opponents, with the threat of being uninvited to future hustings if I rocked the boat. Now, in short, these events were intended to give the impression of a debate while in fact being a charade, okay? Something to facilitate the coronation of the party elite's favoured candidate. I refused to take part in that charade. I refused because I want real debate, original ideas, challenging views. And I want to be challenged by you, the members. I want to have a dialogue with you. And so I decided to travel the width and breadth of the country meeting you all. Sometimes in meetings such as this, or sometimes in small gatherings around a cup of coffee. Because you know, it is you, the people on the ground, the ones collecting signatures, leafleting, canvassing, organising tombolas to obtain deposit for your candidates. You are the ones with the knowledge of what's actually going on. If you want to fix a hospital, you don't ask the middle management and the administrators. You ask the nurses and the doctors what needs to be done to make things work better. So unless we make every effort to harness all the combined wisdom and knowledge and experience and talent which exists in abundance amongst the entire party and direct all of this towards our shared goals, UKIP will continue to be a prisoner of herself and will never realise the incredible potential that I envisage for the party. It's been clear to me that areas such as Northern Ireland are being largely ignored by the party elite who dismiss it as a pointless area to concentrate our efforts. Now, I understand how frustrating this must be to have dedicated activists and members who don't feel listened to and who don't want the status quo, but who have high ambitions for the future of UKIP in Northern Ireland, which are simply not being realised. So I don't want to talk at you. I'd like this to be a dialogue. I'd like each of you to please feel free to ask me any questions at all that you feel will help you better understand my vision for the party, as well as sharing your own ideas both about how the leadership can better serve and represent the membership, and also what you feel that we could be doing better to make UKIP a more powerful political weapon. My fellow candidates don't want to do this. They've made it clear that the only opinions that count are those which originate behind closed doors within London and which are simply disseminated down to the rest of the party and I cannot stress enough at this point what that should mean to you here in Northern Ireland. In reality, what it does mean is that you have two clear choices in this leadership election, not three. You have the choice between a party which is run from the top down with business as usual, the same people making the same mistakes and subjecting the rest of us to the same consequences of those mistakes, the same poor management and lack of professionalism, accountability and transparency, the same lack of engagement and communication throughout the party, 
and therefore the same inevitable decline in membership and the loss of an opportunity that I believe we will never have again. Now conversely, with my standing in this leadership contest, you have the choice of a party which will be powered by its members and the knowledge and experience of its members using a comprehensive system of direct democracy and collective decision making, a mass membership movement, which will be the guarantors of a swift and genuine Brexit, a UKIP which will pioneer the future of politics in Britain and affect real positive change in people's lives. A UKIP which will help all those who are unable to help themselves and stand up for everyone who feels left behind and not listened to. A UKIP which will protect and sustain our British way of life and our unique and incredible heritage and values. A UKIP which in Northern Ireland isn't just a right-wing version of the Alliance Party, but is in fact a truly different mass movement, which works in tandem with that same movement in the rest of the UK. And a UKIP which will fight relentlessly to ensure that the government never forgets that it is we, the people of Britain, who are the masters, and it is they who are the servants. If the choice you want is for UKIP to be a grassroots-driven organisation that exploits the tremendous strengths and potential of scattered members throughout the whole country, then I would ask you to really stick your necks out and join me in this fight, taking every possible opportunity to engage fellow members who don't have access to social media or internet, but who respect your views and your judgment and to please remind them that UKIP never was a top-down organisation and it should never become a top-down organisation. We must harness and cultivate the spirit of 2016 in our party. This has been a year when the people, not the establishment, controlled the debate. A year when a globalist elite and their ciphers in national parliaments had their wings clipped. A year when ordinary people decided they wouldn't be dictated to and demanded to be heard. We saw just this week in America what can be achieved when the people, not the party establishment, choose the person that they believe will fight for them. And it is no coincidence that Nigel worked with Trump on his campaign. Nigel always believed in and has always trusted the people, not the so-called experts. And it is this quality that set him apart from the political class in Britain. In this contest, I am the only Faragist candidate. And I want, with the help of you, the members, to continue and evolve his legacy to create a movement where the 17 million people that voted against the elite can truly take them to task. To create a movement that is fit to change Britain forever and by extension, Europe and the entire world. To create a movement that enfranchises the many in the democratic process and expands it in a way not seen since women were granted the vote to create a movement that is powered by the people. And I honestly believe that if we achieve this, if the members of UKIP agree to get behind me and make a clear statement that we believe that the party is the property of the members and not the officials, not the salaried officials, that our membership will expand at an incredible rate will attract high caliber talent, will obtain the most legitimate and democratic mandate of all political parties in Britain, and will therefore go on to start winning elections and making a massive impact in Britain. What's in my own head is necessarily limited. If I become the leader, I will not succeed 
because of what is in here. I will succeed to serve effectively and guide UKIP towards the best possible future because you will be with me every step of the way. And so, you have kindly listened to me. It's now time for me to listen to you. Thank you.